I was just out here meditating on a few things and decided I would go and stick it on the video and I don't know if if the idea is just an idea in my head or if you know I was thinking of the God of yesterday. The God of yesterday. Um, I was sitting here thinking about, and I don't remember, I don't have no scriptures tonight, but I believe it's in 1 Samuel, I think it is, where um, David is walking up to the giant. I can only imagine what David's thoughts was when he actually saw the size of the giant. I think he was like nine or ten foot tall. Uh, the man, no doubt, had to been intimidating. Um, but David was commanded to go to the brook to get the stones. I still don't know why that he picked up five stones. That's what I hear anyway. When he made the pronouncement to the giant that he was going to take his head off, I believe he was actually speaking on behalf of of the God that David knew. Um, David didn't have no um, premonition of what God was going to do. He was basically acting on his faith. He didn't know that God was going to take him down. He had a pretty good idea that he was there not in his own power. You know, I always love to watch wrestling on television when they put the real tiny man up against the great big man. And they do that for ratings. They do it because they know that people will tune in to see what's going on and they will enjoy the, the festival of them sort of fighting with one another, knowing that the big man has a lot of weight and a lot of ability and the young man is very um he's able to move around he's able to dodge the big man in a lot of ways but it's good entertainment but can you imagine david walking up to this giant and this giant no doubt thought he was in the catbird seat and I don't really know that David knew that he had the ability to throw the slingshot. I think David in the scripture, I believe it Bible even states that he was a man of war, that, that he knew how to fight, that he knew how to wrestle. He knew how to take down the bear. I think the Bible talks about him, uh, uh, taking out the animal that was trying to get the lambs. And I think I'm telling you right on that, but I think David had a little bit of a history of what was going on and how that when it was time to put the stone in the slingshot, that he had pretty much already made a dedication that this stone was going to hit him in the head. And sure enough, it wasn't by David's ability, but that rock left that slingshot and went into the forehead of the giant, and it knocked him down. Now, did the rock knock him out? No, I think the story goes on that David take take taking his um his sword and he cut his head off. And I think that's what actually killed him. I think the stone was just the means by getting him down to ground level where David could finish him off. See, I could talk to you a lot more about David and the giant. 
I was thinking about the three Hebrew boys in the fire. Remember how they all said that the king, we will not serve you. If you was to throw us in the fire, that we're still not going to serve you. And imagine what they thought when they was actually tossed into the fiery furnace. Do you think that maybe in their mindset that they thought, well, it's been a good life. We fix them to go into the fiery furnace. But the fiery furnace wasn't hot to them. It didn't even singe their hair. Or even the king had put the, the mittens and the nylon stockings on to make it where the fire would just literally consume them men. It didn't do it. And the reason it didn't do it is God was there. When the king come back and looked inside the door, he saw four men in the fire. He didn't see three. He saw four. And the fourth was light unto the Son of God. My Bible's not open tonight. I'm not sure exactly where that is. But there was four men that was walking in the fire. And can you imagine what the king must have thought looking in there? Now, you know, them soldiers that had threw them in, it was so hot that it even killed some of the soldiers that tossed them into the fiery furnace. It didn't, it didn't harm the three Hebrew boys. They was in the fire and the fire didn't even singe the hair. Didn't even have a smell of smoke, I think the Bible says. They didn't even have no odor of smoke. I can't get around burning pine cones without having a smell of smoke around me. Can you imagine when the Israelites got to the Red Sea and they started going through and they saw the wall of water. They saw the wall of water and they started walking through on dry ground. Imagine what they was thinking when they saw that hallway open up that they was able to see on both hands, on both sides, the wall extending up several feet, no doubt. Do you think that they even thought and imagined all that that was going on? I, I can't even really imagine how I would feel if I was walking up and seeing the wall of water, just like the men in the fire. You remember, you remember when Daniel was in the lion's den and how that he laid down with the lions and the lions didn't even, didn't even hurt Daniel at all. You know, that, that's just amazing. I mean, what can you say about the fact that with all these that I've said so far is Bible stories. Every one of them is Bible stories. What did they all have in common? All the stories, the one about David, um... All the ones that I told, the, the three Hebrew boys, the the Israelites seeing the wall of water, and and Daniel is in now in the lion's den. Can you? I, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. They all had something in common. They was all in a tight situation. 
You know, God does his best work in a tight situation. Everybody, for the most part, has got Mr. Trump down for the count. Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon saying that it's over with, it's done. You need to concede, you need to give in. What would have happened if David would have given in? What if he would have got scared over the giant and the, and David decided to get scared? Now, before anybody says anything, I am certainly not comparing the situation with politics to David. But, you know, if somebody is in the will of God... Don't you think that the will of God is going to defend a person if they're in the will of God? I would think that the will of God would help defend the person. Everybody deserves a trial. Every every crook that is in prison deserves a trial to be found guilty. I certainly don't see nothing wrong with letting there be a period of time in order to prove the malfeasance of everything that has been going on the whole time. Because I think a lot of people knows that there was a sure enough theft going on. And just because we haven't actually proved that yet, I believe that time is going to tell that that's going to be proven. I believe that 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 the Lord is going to intervene and he's going to prove the guilty. He's going to prove who the guilty is. These men that I just talked about, the children of Israel and Daniel in the lion's den and the three Hebrew boys and the Israelites looking at the water, and David fighting the giant, they all was in a tight situation. But here's what bound them together. They all knew God. David knew God. The children of Israel was God's chosen people. They knew the Lord. Was they always pleasing unto the Lord? No, but they knew the Lord. Go and look at the three Hebrew boys. Did they make a proclamation and say, you know what? We can be put into that fire, but we're not going to serve you. I'm not going to serve you. They made a proclamation that they're not going to serve the king. So he had them thrown into the fire. See, they was all found in the situation. They all knew God. Do I know that Mr. Trump knows God? I can't look inside his soul. I can look at some of the evidence of the things that he's done over the last four years. Has he had a past that is unbecoming, sure. If I believe if I was looking into your past or you was looking into my past, you would see things that would be unbecoming in me. And I believe I could look into your past and see things that you are not so proud of. So is it, is it impossible that I can look in to the president's and and see and see his his wrongdoing. I'm sure that I could. I think that we all the Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I personally, I'll say this. I personally didn't vote for Mr. Trump for him to be my pastor. I voted him to be my president. Do I at least owe him enough respect to give him enough time 
to let him fight the battle. If God is going to fight the battle, God is going to fight the battle. Do I believe that he is on the Lord's side? There's evidence to prove that he is on the Lord's side in just the things that he's done in protecting life. If that alone by itself is worth the time to come out here and remind you that if God saved David from the giant, if God helped the three Hebrew boys, if God was to save them people walking across the Red Sea, and God saved Daniel from the lion's den, how much more do you think that God owes it to someone that has protected the individual life? That maybe we won't know the name of the person that has been able to be given life. But God knows. God knows who's been protected because of the stance that he has had on life of a little baby. Does it matter to God? Absolutely. It matters to God. They all knew God, and they knew that God was in control. David knew that God was in control when he picked up the stones. God knew. David knew that he was in control. God knew that he was in control when the water was up on the side of the Israelite people. God was in control then. They knew that. God was in control when they threw Daniel in the lion's den because the lions didn't harm Daniel. And them three men walking around in the fire wasn't singed in any way because the Spirit of God was in that fiery furnace with them three Hebrew boys. See, these are just short little stories that we can talk about. God is in control. And he's in control of a stupid election. Because God is going to have his way. (laughs) You can just count on that. God's going to have his way. He's going to blow men's mind. When we read these Bible stories, it should blow our mind when we read these Bible stories. If God was in control back then, is God in control today? All these men here had faith. David had faith to pick up stones. Daniel had faith to walk into the lion's den. The three Hebrew boys had faith when they walked into the fiery furnace. The Israelites had faith when they had to walk on dry ground looking at that wall of water that they know was defying gravity. See, they had faith. They didn't know the outcome. Now, at the time when David picked up the stones, he didn't know. He wasn't shown ahead of time of what actually was going to happen. Part of that was done by faith. The man that was going into the lion's den, he didn't know that the lions weren't going to attack him. The children of Israel didn't know they was going to get across, all the way across, before the enemy started coming. They didn't know the outcome. Has God changed any today in 2020? Is it impossible for us to pretend that the Lord is fully in control? My advice today is to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I believe this upcoming news in the next couple, two or three or four weeks is going to be amazing. Is literally going to be amazing for people that are looking. I hope that you're looking for the Lord to return. That's what I'm looking for. Elderlyministry.com is the website. There's a phone number there that you can call, and you can call me if you'd like to. I'm here to talk to you anytime. Just leave a message when you do, and I'll return your call. Thank y'all for watching.